Welcome back, Six String Philosophers, to Picks and Mortar, Episode 2. Today, we got two shops for the price of one in Saratoga Springs, New York. Visited an amazing shop. On the one hand, you have um, a record store. On the other hand, you have a guitar shop. We definitely had more than enough to talk about, and so hopefully you enjoy this episode. A little different in that this one focuses more on the music itself. Um, although we do learn a lot about the shop. Basically a curated review of some great vinyl treasures that are in the, in the store. So I definitely encourage you, please go visit if you're in the area or you know looking for a place to go to pick an area. Uh, I would say Saratoga Springs is an awesome town. It's a beautiful city. Um, lots of great places to hang out. And there's some suggestions in the, in the video as well from a person who's a local. But yeah, definitely um, see this shop in person someday and check out the description today um super important because in there is going to be a track list if you have favorite albums or you feel like you have opinions on any of the albums that are mentioned or any important tracks that are there if you can relate please enter into the comments um, don't forget also if you're enjoying um, this program you can encourage more by liking and subscribing all right and uh, thank you so much enjoy picks and mortar episode two <laughs> So, um, welcome, Six String Philosophers. I'm here in Saratoga Springs. Saratoga Springs. And here visiting with Jason uh, at Six Generation Strings. Yes, right. we've, uh, we've got two shops in one here. You've got Six Generation Strings, which uh, my, my partner Tom handles all of the instruments here. Uh, he is uh, skilled in the, uh, in the world of fine strings, but we carry all sorts of stringed instruments, do restoration work, repair work. Uh, and I run Off Track Records here in the shop, which is, um, that's our focus uh, for yeah, today. that's our, our, our vinyl record selection here in shop. Beautiful. Um, all right, so for today, since I just barged in on you, the, <laughs> the challenge for you is going to be, uh, I'll ask you to just maybe pick five important records that you recommend. Oh, this is fun. We're going to do it completely at random. I'm just going to see what we have. I'm primarily a used record store, so I don't know what I'm going to get from week to week. Uh, there's always some excitement in that, but I do carry some new titles, some reissues, things that always sell. I like that a lot of what college kids listen to uh, now is what I listened to years ago when I was in college. All the stuff I like, they still like, so that's good. Awesome. Uh, all right. Oh. Value increase on something like a Radiohead. Uh, oh goodness! Retail back in the day. Well, if you have like an original uh, pressing, then yeah, there's okay. definitely been uh, or originals. I think that's part of the why the popularity of vinyl has had this resurgence. Um, I think personally, it's the most fun uh, format to listen to, but it's also the most collectible. It retains its value. A lot of people come in and ask, "Is that an original pressing?" Okay. Uh, is is there a big quality difference between like a first pressing, or is that more of a provenance thing where it's important? A little of both. It okay. depends on what you've got, but certainly uh, the first pressing is going to sound like what it would have sounded like if a record came out in 1962. That's what it sounded oh, like cool. the day it came okay. out. So I think people chase that. With a lot of the remasters and things, you're, 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 you're not getting what did it sound like the day it came out. All right. So just on that same lane for a second. Um, so what is different about, like for the experience of somebody who who's, you know, loves great music, why should they invest in vinyl as opposed to you know non-physical formats. Oh yeah or, well because I mean non-physical format you can't hold the artwork in your hand like this you can't experience the record that way participate with the record that way liner notes and artwork and everything that makes you think about not just the song itself but the album everything that went into it the whole experience so I think that's another reason it's 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 you can't look at that on your computer. You can. You can look at images. It's not the same as holding it in your hand while you're listening. I remember record. this one. Yeah, these. My brother had this one when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I remember holding this in my hand and even just thinking, like, it's an interesting choice that they spliced the logo in half. But when it was huge, it made it seem like an epic. Did we have yeah. C we have CDs too? You know, Counting Crows. I've, I've got like four of these, and they. This is this has really had a comeback. This particular one, but, you know. Look, I got I need glasses to read the CD. Right. Now, was that originally, was, did they offer that in vinyl back in, what was it, 92 oh, or something? Or there like may that? be a press, it's, it's become a pretty sought after record. The, the second one especially, right. I know that their second record is one that's banned. This no, one too. No filler on that one, right? I mean, that's no, I mean, you know, I, 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 Counting Crows, I will admit, are a guilty pleasure of mine. I, I have always, as is this one, this Sheryl Crow record, is okay. with, with uh, if it makes you happy. This has never been issued no on vinyl. No need for guilt on that. That's just yeah. straight up pleasure. So. This one I know uh, has never been issued on, on, on wax before. Oh, so okay. the, the Counting Crows, you can find them, but they've become kind of pricey just because they're scarce. 
Gee, if I if I had to pick a couple, let's go through and see what we have in the like. I never get. I don't have a, a section where I recommend things. So, okay. the Jesus Lizard. I'm a huge fan of this band. This is uh, David Yao and company just doing some really um, uh, dirty punk rock and roll. Is it, there a track or two that are the standouts? Uh, for me, yeah. Um, the the opening track is just killer. Then comes Dudley, and then the the track right after it, Mouth Breather, is like if if you're into grunge records and okay. things from the 90s this is a band that um did much celebrated if you know them but i think more people should discover this record it's this has been here for a few weeks so i can link that in the description too if you oh want. sweet you yeah know, i definitely tracks. recommend jesus litter i recommend this breeders record last splash this is like a essential 90s record with cannonball the big hit on it but one. yeah yes. kim deals uh one of the greats. All right, what? No, but did Kim Deal have other projects too? Kim Deal did have other projects. Of course, she was the bassist for the Pixies uh, and then formed the Breeders. And there's also one record from a group that, uh, called The Amps that was sort of a, uh, I think it was just a side project that was thrown together uh, that only released one record. But some of the songs on that record, it's called Pacer. If you can find that record by The Amps, just as good as any Breeders record. Cool, good to learn. I I, she was, uh, 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 what, do you, what do you call somebody who lives in Ohio? Ohio? <laughs> a da from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. And then How about a Buckeye. Lived in a Buckeye. Yeah, yeah she was. A, she was from the Buckeye State, okay. but lived in Boston. Uh, joined the Pixies, replying to an ad in a newspaper, I believe, and then. Uh, That's some and language. then moved back to Dayton, where she formed the Breeders and was sort of in that scene with like Guided by Voices and. I said, all right, we got two now. Two down, and they're both from a similar. Um, Aesthetic of being sort of 90s. Or 90s, early. oh yeah. So yeah, now I gotta. Okay, I gotta. I gotta veer away from the 90s a bit. Just yeah, just you know, just, your, just seeing what we have. And follow the you know the dealer's choice here. All right, okay. Uh, Miles Davis was married to Betty Davis, and this is a killer funk record. And originals of this are like you know a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks. So it's nice that we have a reissue in the shop right now, which awesome. is um, I think this is my last copy of this, was but that, uh, highly recommend this. For? Uh, Thirty bucks, okay. not bad at all. Yeah. Just just a killer funk record, start to finish. Um, and uh, this is Light in the Attic did the reissue I think last year. Hot tracks on that one. Oh, but if I had to, I think the one that I like to always play is uh, uh, Walking Up the Road. Okay. Yeah. So check that one out, and you'll you'll want to play it a few times and start dancing to it. More in the funk as opposed to the bop. And, uh, yeah, I'd I'd call that more in the in the in the funk realm. Let's see. Is there anything on the wall I would recommend right now? Um, I like all these records, but uh, I'm actually going to grab the the Graham Parsons appearance of uh, on the birds. Okay. Uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo is this is this is one of the more celebrated birds records because it's it's basically a Graham Parsons record. Um, all right, so for, for those of us who are ignorant about Graham Parsons, give us the, you know, the cheat sheet on <laughs> where he fits into the musical puzzle. I know oh, man, I guess. around his name. Yeah, the, I think you, if you like Wilco, you probably know Graham Parsons. I would say Graham Parsons invented country rock, right? So that sound that became popular with like Uncle Tupelo and everything, that, that, that came from Graham Parsons. He was hanging out with everybody. Okay. I, I think the other, the, some of the folklore is like, Graham Parsons recorded Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones before the Rolling Stones did. Because he was hanging out with Keith Richards oh, and Keith wow. said, why don't you go ahead and have this song and then... That'd be one to look for. Mm. Like, that's, I'll, that's, I'll yeah, you can, you, can, you can find that on the uh, Flying Burrito Brothers record. Cool. But uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's been much celebrated and it's always nice when, a, when, when that one in particular... That's why it's face out right now. I love the artwork, but also like this will be... Of all the birds records, that like seems to be the one. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> well yeah, I like I like things uh, that have is. have nice graphics and cool. and are eye catching, but also popular records that people people go for. Oh geez, all right, we're down to number five already. Um, that went too fast. I know. I'm like, all right, wait, can I have a can I have a you maybe I'll pick honorable six. Mentions, <laughs> yeah, honorable mentions. Sub in, you know, a, a sixth spot in no particular order. Let's say if you uh, if you like it a lot, we can just throw it in. I mean, you know, I think I think one of the great live records, and this is another popular one that always sells when you get it, Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison, can't go wrong. It's it's sort of an iconic live record. And that's the de definitive version. That's the definitive hear, version uh, of, that you hear with, uh, you know, it it it. I think it inspired Folsom the movie, Prison. in fact. But yeah, that is the version of of Folsom Prison Blues when he's actually performing it for prisoners that can really relate to the material. Okay, so with that in mind. 
are there some great songs where you would say the live album version is, should be the go-to? Man, that's a fun question. Um, well, certainly Folsom Prison Blues would be one. I, I really like uh, I'm thinking live records here. Oh, boy. All right, well, if I had to pick a live record, I'd probably say uh, Jimmy Smith, jazz organist, uh, Root Down. Okay. I just think that record's killer. And th I guess there's some tracks on there that, are, that you can find, but it's just, that, that record's been sampled so many times by so many yes. artists, too. You want to just tell us a little about how you, um, you know, came to the shop? Or uh, well, I'd been collecting records because I have no talent uh, at, at playing anything. So this is my way into music. I can kind of play guitar. I mean, okay. you know, I learned Something. some chords and that was it. I never took any lessons. I, I marvel at people like, you know, Stephen Malkmus of Pavement. There you go. There's another one. Another 90s classic, right? Okay. To, you don't have to learn how to play your instrument or know how to sing. You just do it. And then after time, you become pretty skilled and you actually do learn to do it. But I never did that. Okay. <laughs> I, I just kept listening and leaving it to others. Um, so your, your pathway came through, through film, correct? Yeah, actually, I work in film and television. And uh, I find locations for TV shows and feature films. But, you know, this has always been a hobby that turned into a little bit more than a hobby. And, uh, and now here we are. Um, yeah, I, I moved to Saratoga a couple of years ago. There hadn't been a record store here for about 10 years. Um, I've always enjoyed collecting things and I've worked in record stores off and on and it felt like maybe I should try to put my own thing together here. So we did. Beautiful store. Yeah. The building put me in touch with Tom, so he handles all the instruments here and he was looking to expand his business. He does fine strings, but here's our space. Um, yeah, this is, this is what we do here. We've got accessories, uh, over three, 4,000 records in stock, always new things cycling in. Um, it, pieces here that have been, we've got antique pieces, this Mandola, this is a Gibson Mandola from 1914. Uh, and that's here with just other pieces that uh, have either been restored or, or crafted by hand or and how about behind that glass there? Is that your luthier shop? That it? Well, yes. Those are some, some of the pieces that uh, Tom has worked on here with his mentor, Nick Frears. Is it possible um, to just turn the lights on and give us a peek from the doorway? Yeah, let me give you, if you want, you want to see the workshop where he is. I'm just going to take a quick peek. Yeah, yeah. If you want to just tell us, uh, mention the name again of your... Uh, your yeah, so, so Tom Dunn is uh, the, the gentleman that you'll find in here on, uh, on most uh, weekdays. Uh, working, uh, working on any number of projects but he was just it, it, it took him a little while he just put a cello together it took a few months wow. and he's really got some some serious skills how about you want to just walk us past some of those cool guitars and yeah those are those are custom numbers. pedals from yeah. some people who make those down in schenectady oh, new york even more um actually one more time make yeah. a plug for these guys okay guys, so yeah uh, po poison uh, poison noises boutique pedals made down in schenectady and that's kind of what, what here is just uh, carry some, some items that you don't just find at a guitar center. We're, we're more of a boutique kind of shop. We're authorized dealer for a couple different guitars, Larivés, Godans, uh, Blue Ridge guitars. Nice steely bluegrass sounding kind of guitars here. Um, these are some custom jobs out in uh, the, the luthiers that he knows out in California. Put those pieces together. This is a nice piece that uh, Tom and, and Nick Frears, his mentor, put together. Just made out of a 35 millimeter uh, film reel that they've repurposed into a guitar. Is that just by virtue of them having it, or was it planned ahead of time? Yeah, I think a, a little, a little bit of both. It okay. was just a, an, an interesting uh, project for them to see what what can we do with with found pieces like this. Cool. Else, uh, along the way here? Uh, that's, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Have, have a look, you know, these are some one-of-a-kind pieces. But the last question is, um, why vinyl and what, is, what does it do for the music and, and for the listener? Well, I think it has a richness to it when you play it. If you got the right stereo set up at home, if you have a nice receiver, that to me tends to be, get a good vintage receiver, you'll kind of hear this the warmth everybody describes that they love about vinyl. Is there an entry-level brand where you're not mortgaging the house? Uh, 
I, I think you can get a decent like a, a Kenwood, a Pioneer, something like that in the five hundred dollar range. Get a good okay. receiver. And what about for the actual phonograph itself? Uh, I use an Audio Technica here. It's similar to at home. I have a Technics twelve hundred, and what I like about these Audio Technicas are that they're similar to those, a little bit lighter weight version of that, and not going to break the bank on it. It's about three hundred, four hundred dollars for one of those. Cool. Yeah, recommend those. But uh, now's the time. Everybody's getting into it. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Amen. It's back, Good right? Best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, when people are in Saratoga, what are some other things in town? Is there a great place to grab a sandwich, slice, whatever? Uh, uh, well, I, I'm a big fan of Hattie's, which is an institution here. Best fried chicken in New York State, I think. Uh, check them is. out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've got uh, Fat Polly's is one of my favorite sandwich spots. I think we got two great taco spots here. I'm a big fan of Takero for lunch, and I'm a big fan of Cantina for dinner. Um, yeah, those would be the, the spots that I tend to find myself at most most regularly. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're very for welcome. Thank you. your time. Your shop is amazing. Hopefully, lots of people come in and, uh, and check out your vinyl collection. I'm sure we just skimmed the, uh, the tip of the iceberg. Right? I don't even know what's going out because I got a crate. I got to get out behind the counter. So, you know, there's always something new. Every, every couple of days, I cycle some new things in. And yeah, come on down. See us here at uh, Six Generation Strings and Off Track Records at 480 Broadway. We are your source for all things music in Saratoga Springs. Um, fine strings, guitars, accessories, over 3,000 new and used records always, always in stock. Jason, awesome meeting you. Thank, Thank you, you so too. All right. All right. Hope you enjoyed our conversation. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes. Again, if you want to recommend a shop that you like, please do so in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the meantime, check out other videos also on the channel. It's definitely some great guitar tutorial stuff as well as just um, other features. Have fun. See you on the next one.